our greatest gift as humans, um, now that I'm on, honestly understanding, is we have the ability to change our perception from the past. So what we once thought in the past that, why did that happen to me? Why did I deserve that? To now looking back that maybe there was something else in store for you that you had no idea that something greater was going to happen for you. It's the Health in the Real World podcast. It's time to start the show with Chris Jenke as your host. Here to give you everything that you need when it comes to fitness strategies. We keep it simple and easy. It's your roadmap to get healthy. You don't need equipment and you don't need a gym. Just the right strategies to get you fit and trim. The Health in the Real World podcast is sponsored by... I bet you could write your own diet book, right? I mean, the information's already out there and well-known. So why then are we all still so overweight? Check out my book, Help My Diet Sucks, and you will have a simple checklist, no diet dogma, and no crazy, crazy diets. Check it out on Amazon, Help My Diet Sucks. Hello and welcome to the Health in the Real World podcast. I'm Chris Jenke, joined today by Mary Krontiris. Mary, how's it going today? Good, very well, thank you. Yourself? Good. I'm doing well, I'm doing well. Thank you so much for joining me today. You're a professional bodybuilder. You've started a few businesses in addition to that, kind of centered around wellness and, and health. Uh, tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you're doing. Absolutely. Well, thank you for this opportunity to have on your podcast. Um, for everyone who knows, um, I am my background's in sports medicine. I graduated from Stony Brook and it was athletic training. So for a lot of people, they're not familiar with athletic training. They think it's personal training. Um, we are healthcare providers. We work with athletes. Um, if you watch NFL, MLB, NBA, the person who runs out on the field or the court is not the doctor. We're the athletic trainers. So we do the evaluation, diagnosis, treatments, rehabilitation. I'm um, also a strength and conditioning specialist. And as you said, my background is a professional bodybuilder in the WBFF space. Right, right, exactly. So you're currently... Uh, or have you worked for a sports team in the past? Like, you know, you're the person running out on the field or? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. A wide range. Um, talk about the hustle, right? From um, originally from New York City. So I worked from a physical therapy clinic to per diem coverages for private schools, um, for middle high school, collegiate. I worked at uh, the Bronx for Monroe College. And then I worked actually for a semi-pro football team, uh, the Brooklyn Mariners at one point. So awesome. yes, a nice then- that's awesome and then talk to us about your business now so hail mary which is a play on your name what um what what is your business about yeah so a little background um as everyone during 2020 i'm apologizing you know deeply for everyone was affected by covid um just like myself and others um, around the world i lost my job as an athletic trainer i was a freelancer working in new york city through different private schools so during that time um I like to say, like, as Albert Einstein once said, in difficulty, in the midst of difficulty lies opportunity. And that's where I took that and just decided to create um, a mobile tablet and web application designed to keep our athletes safe and their well-being first. Um, what makes it unique is that unlike anything else out in the market, there's not an all-in-one app that engages the entire athletic ecosystem. So when I say athletic ecosystem, it's like a wide range, right? So depending on your organization, whether it's a school, whether it's like the IMG Academy, um, AAU, the Amateur Athletic Union, like a massive multi-organizations, sports academy, sports league, it engages from athletic directors, school nurses, coaches, personal trainers, strength and conditioning coaches, athletic trainers, parents, if the athletes are minor, because they're absolutely involved, they have to be, um, and affiliated um, healthcare providers. So physical therapists, surgeons, doctors, So during that time, um, pretty much tried to solve one um, pre-COVID. There was a lot of, um, I guess you can say like, we have so much data um, and statistics of athletes getting hurt in the the US. So three three million a year are seen in the emergency room. Additional 5 million uh, youth athletes are seen in a sports clinic. So that's like already 8 million. Um, So we already know the statistics are high, but there is no effective solution to kind of decrease those statistics. So I decided to create a solution where one, try to solve, um, save injuries, save the lives of athletes. 
as well as how can we return safely? This is now right during 2020 post COVID, a peace of mind. So that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, you cite some pretty incredible statistics here. Um, every three minutes, a child is seen in the emergency department for a sports related concussion. That's not like a sports related cut on the knee where you need stitches. That's brain injury we're talking. Uh, the sports with the highest concussion rates, football, soccer, and hockey. And then you said about football, that football has 12 times the number of injuries than basketball does. So uh, agreed, there are a lot of, there are a lot of injuries. And like you said, you're, you're also targeting children. So uh, on a practical level, how does your program sort of bring everyone together? You said the parents, the children, you know, the athletes, the, the doctors, what, what does that look like? Yeah, absolutely. So for someone who is not in the space, I like to think of it as, um, so Amazon, right? Like it started off just um, selling books, right? We, and now it's this massive business where, I don't know about you, it's my one stop for everything. If I need to buy my oh, yeah. clothes, if I need to buy food, right? It's everything. So I like to think of my business as without a non conceded way as an Amazon where it's a one-stop solution. And depending on the, the audience who I'm talking to, they, it, it has a different core value. So for the athletic director, for example, as uh, the person who oversees a department, their main thing is they wanna see um, results. They wanna see more championships, more people enrolled in their program. So for example, in our application, the mobile web and tablet, we have a sports recruitment exposure platform. So we have athletes now being able to see and kind of connect with um, respective agents or college scouts um, and coaches. So that's like, for example, okay, for an athletic director, that's um, appetizer, that's tease, that's, you know, it's great for them. For coaches, uh, for athletes, it's a corrective and preventative platform. So for coaches, it's a way to, they can add their training programs and monitor their athletes. They can upload their game film footage, their practice drills, and especially during COVID when we didn't know the uncertainty when just in case there was another quarantine or other shutdown, this is a great opportunity where practices and games don't have to stop. They can still continue. And by uploading and just having that, um, all the database stored in one um, application, it just makes it clean for the program as well as um, just the community engage them still. Uh, and especially for athletes, right, I can only imagine youth from, I'm when I say youth, I'm talking about from 18 to from, you know, from five or so forth, um, even adolescents from above to the age of 25 athletes. Uh, it, the COVID and the overall pandemic, um, it affected the human psyche very much, right? It's not just the physical, it's the mental, it's the emotional, it's the social, it's the financial, uh, spiritual being of the of the, um, the athlete of a person. So my main mission with um, the application, I want to heal, I shouldn't say that, I don't, it's not that I want, I want the, um, I want to provide a platform where the entire athletic ecosystem can help um, treat athletes their health overall. And their health overall to me is an interconnection of six components. As I just mentioned, it's the physical, the mental, the emotional, social, um, spiritual, and financial. So these are all interconnected. And by just the treating all and um, connect, treating them all and uh, seen as equal, that's how we can, you know, sorry, but yeah, we we'll continue. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. hundred percent. Well, this, this is great. I've, I've looked at some of the, some of the sample videos that you have with the app. And it looks like, you know, very clear instruction as far as how to do certain exercises. I've, I've got a side plank pulled up here and, um, and, and, you know, you're, I, I can tell you're trying to integrate the whole body, shoulders, hips, knees, ankles, everything's connected greatly minimizes the risk of injury, right? Obviously there's still a risk because it's unpredictable movement in sports, but um, I agree. There's definitely a need for this. I remember um, growing up, I don't know how much sports you played, but I played every season. It was a different sport, right? Um, played football for one year. That was plenty for me. I remember we were doing hitting drills and I would hit, I hit a guy or he hit me and my arm went numb, boom, numb, right? Just like that. So, um, you know, we come across these different injuries when they're contact sports and when one player is much bigger than a smaller player and things like that. So, um, I think it's great what you're doing. Yeah. What, uh, if you don't mind me asking, what, uh, was that high school or for college you played football? High school. I just played as a freshman and then okay. I, 
I was um, like, I I'm done. I'm changing the basketball. <laughs> I can't afford this. Um, it's interesting you said that um, the irony that I'm in a sports medicine, a sports athletic fitness industry is growing up, I actually didn't have the luxury of playing sports. Mm. Uh, sports was a luxury for me. Um, from the age of 12, I started uh, working two to three jobs all the way to my high school career and college to fund my college education and help with my family. So I find it now in a sense where I get to be a part of another athlete's career, like behind the scenes and I get to see them, see their journey. So to me, that just to be a part of it now, like I'm reliving my childhood. Right. Like, That's yeah. amazing. You're, you were that busy and then and weren't really involved in sports or athletics. And then you became a professional bodybuilder. How did that happen? I want to talk about that story a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I, like, I think I'll just become a professional <laughs> bodybuilder. So what, what I, had, um, a, uh, I did a promotional video and um, interviewing with someone and same thing, like how did, you know, you're an athletic trainer, a strength and conditioning coach and a professional bodybuilder. Like how did your fitness journey start? Right. And um, just like anyone else, uh, just being super vulnerable, but it's, I started for the wrong reasons. Um, look back now, it's no one's fault, but my uh, family, friends of families, they, whether it's verbal, um, mental type of abuse, just really convinced me that I was fat in my family. And it's just, for anyone who listens to this podcast, I come from a very Greek household. I'm a first generation American. So everyone in my family is like, just a stick like this <laughs> for me, like curves weren't uh, recognized or honored as they are today. Um, so at the age of 14, um, privately and secretly, um, I funded my own gym membership. It was a female's gym at the time, had no idea what I was doing. Um, you know, now in today's time, you know, children, even adults have different social media platforms. I don't know what your way of, or when you started fitness, but I looked through magazines. I was cutting things out. I'm like, okay, that looks good doing these cardio machines. So that's how it started. Um, and then the irony also, again, didn't select this in high school. Um, every year, every semester, they put me in weight training class. I'm like, what the hell? I was the only female in this weight training class with these guys. So a combination of weight training plus, you know, working out because of my family and just being really convinced um, that I just eventually became in love with it. Just loved the idea of just how it felt. So yes. That's how it yeah. started. Wow, that's pretty crazy how like an accident like that where you just happen to be the only female in a weightlifting class. And then you're like, oh, yeah. oh, I kind of <laughs> like this. I like the results. This works. Right? Especially when you can probably like bench press or like squat more than the guys at the time, right? <laughs> right. That's that's always a plus, right? <laughs> um, okay, so so you're you kind of have an interest in it. You're you're maybe getting pretty good at it. What got you to the point where you said, I'm gonna compete? I wanna, I wanna take it to the next level. Yeah. Um, so there's this guy, um, and I'm going to shout out for him for Nick. Um, there was this, um, old dungeon style, um, a friend of ours, the father was a bodybuilder. Um, he had just, he renovated his garage and turned it into a gym. So it was a few blocks away from my house. And at the time I would just go just work out again. I was the only female at this gym. So everyone's like not intimidated, like just doing my thing. And one of my friends, Nick, just said, you know, your exercises and your, your workouts are so methodical. Like, have you ever considered working, uh, uh, competing? And I was like, are you kidding me? Me on stage in a bikini with heels. I said, I don't even do that at a beach and that's allowed. Right. So like <laughs> I always cover up. So, you know, laughed at the idea. And I said, thanks for, you know, for, you know, telling me this. Um, and again, like going back to Albert Einstein, I'm now looking back at the pattern during hardships, and I'm not saying for everybody to, we have to hit rock bottom, but during hardships, we grow. And um, at that point in my life, at the age of 22, it was pretty dark, a lot of things going on, personal, professional in my life, um, that just one day decided to get out of my comfort zone and um, apply to uh, for bodybuilding. One of my uh, colleagues at the physical therapist, he was competing and he's like, I have this coach, why don't you meet him? And it was a coach from Staten Island and uh, just kind of spoke to him. And just from there, I decided to compete. So kind of did it just blindingly. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Um, so then, so you competed a little bit and then what gave you the initial idea of the, the app and the, the, the new business venture? I'm, I'm always fascinated, like how people get started, like going from zero to one, right? That's like the, the most interesting thing yeah. to me. Like what got you to that point? Yeah. So especially 
when COVID hit, lost my job. Uh, for some people, I'm not sure. Um, I like to say, I guess it's it, it's a skill you, you can train, but it's also something I guess you're born with. But I always had this drive, um, just that kind of survival mode. Um, growing up, like I said, I my father passed away when I was four, helping my family. I was the youngest out of my three sisters. I had two half uh, siblings that are older. They had their own family. So I've always had that drive in trying to, whether it's excel in school, always working, trying to help my family, trying to fund my college education, which when I graduated was debt free. So I'm just happy on that. Who can write? Like, who can say that? Like, with a diploma in your hand, just graduate debt free. So it's it amazing. Great. It's really yeah. amazing. Yeah. And um, so just with the COVID and losing my job and um, New York City, that, you know, we get unemployment, but eventually that got cut off. So just this drive of me, of what can I do to, um, for me, get money, have an income, but as well as have like, how can I help my fellow colleagues? Because athletic training for, like I said, it's a profession that some people know, some people don't. Um, it's one of the most burnout professions, uh, athletic training. A lot of people, they burn out after five years. And I was one of those people. As young as I was, 25 years old, a head athletic trainer for a college, managing eight teams, their strength and conditioning coach, like making their meal plans and training plans. It was exhausting because you have to be super flexible. You have to, it's almost like a doctor in a house call. If a game's canceled and it's rescheduled a different day, you have to make sure you're there. So um, the idea of creating something for myself as well as for others so that they don't, other professional healthcare providers, other professional staff in the ecosystem do not get burned out. And ultimately I want to bring back that love um, and fun for athletes to play sports. Um, like, again, I, I don't know what it's like, but I'm on the sideline and I see the, the exhaustion, the burnout, even in athletes, a lot of athletes, again, I'm just pulling up statistics, you know, the, 13 to 17 years old, kids are already burning out that they don't want to play college. They don't want to play high right. school. And right. there's a trend at the age of six and 12, they want to play, but uh, the parents are just kind of like hesitant because of the level of safety and the, the demand of like what the coaches do, what they provide. So yeah, so I just wanted to create something unique, um, of course, for myself, just to have a, an income, but ultimately for athletes and for, to help reduce costs for unnecessary healthcare costs. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Mary, I like to end every show with the chance for you to be a motivational speaker. You're going to go back to that college graduation and you are the speaker. You're going to motivate these recent college graduates, how you think you can get, or how you think they can get the most out of life. What are your um, philosophies, the pillars of, of your philosophy? Absolutely. Um, for anyone watching this um, and if anyone can relate, um, we're all, I like to say, no one is better or um, than another. Um, we all have our obstacles in life. We are not comparing. They are unique in their own way. We all have our hardships, like a roller coaster, there are ups and downs. Um, but as a person once said, it's, it's not what happens to you, it's what you do that what happens to you. So for someone, when something happens, um, I like to take a pause now. Back in the day, it's our greatest gift as humans, um, now that I'm on, honestly understanding, is we have the ability to change our perception from the past. So what we once thought in the past that, why did that happen to me? Why did I deserve that? To now looking back that maybe there was something else in store for you that you had no idea that something greater was going to happen for you. So I like to just say that just change your perception, um, gratitude, just be grateful for where you are, you are exactly where you need to be at this very moment. And then as always, I like to say, um, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So I look at everything as with an opportunity and I say yes. So that's my, my little graduation speech. <laughs> awesome. Mary, how do people get in touch with you? How do they sign up for the program, uh, different websites, social media? Absolutely. So for um, B2B businesses such as schools, um, athletic performance centers, like I said, IMG Academy, AAU, the Olympics, um, to go to www.thecrontierismethod, so my last name, K-R-O-N, 
T-I-R-I-S method.com. And from there, you can find the, um, we're almost about to be launched the tech. It's in four months, so it's exciting. So we're just kind of doing pilot studies now, testing the application. On the same website, um, I decided to, as we discussed, extract my uh, 3D avatar of myself of uh, on-demand video subscription. It's $8 a year is limited offer right now. It's $6 a month. So you can go on the website. And then uh, my personal Instagram is at Mary Quintier is my first and last name. So if there's anything else to find. Perfect. Thank you so much. Again, this is Health in the Real World. I'm Chris Jenke, joined today by Mary Quintieris. And Mary, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Health in the Real World show. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below. Visit mycorebalance.com to learn more.